Good day YouTube, in this episode I'm going to put a tow bar on my new car. Well, it's not a new new car, but it's new to me. And it's a nice car, had lots of bling on it. And one accessory that I really, really wanted was a tow bar, and that was the accessory it didn't have. So, I'm going to put one on myself. This is a video of how I did it. Now the first thing to do to get this job to happen is to get the tow bar off the car. And the video I took of that is of such poor quality that I'm not even going to include it. The sun was shining in the lens, which I didn't realise. And of course, the video is totally ruined. Anyway, there's the tow bar off the car. That's the bracket there that holds it onto the car. You can see there's two bolts on each side. The one bolt goes into the hole you can see there, and the other bolt goes into the slot on the end so that once you loosen it, you can slide the tow bar off of it. Here's one still of the bracket that it was bolted onto, and as you can see from this still, there's a lot of sun affecting the shot. That's why the video of me removing it's not there, but that's a bracket that came off. All very simple to do. This is a view up under the car. You can see the holes there where the tow bar was at that. There's captive nuts inside there. And that there is the bracket that comes with the tow bar kit, which we have to attach where the tow bar came off of. When you're putting the new bracket on that came with the tow bar, you'll find it goes into the, a couple of holes further forward than the holes that the tow bar was originally attached to. But that's okay, there's captive nuts in there. I just did a test bit of the bolt to make sure that the thread was clean. If it's not clean, if it's got a little bit of dust in it, you can give it a squirt with CRC, that's usually enough to remove that. One thing that I will point out is that we don't want to do these brackets up too tight at this point. We want to leave a bit of flop in them because we've got to get the tow bar onto them and that requires a little bit of movement on part of the brackets to make that job a bit easier. You'll see that in just a second. Despite the sun reflecting on the dust that it's collected on my camera lens, you can see quite clearly in this shot just how much slop I've left in the bracket. Now the tow bar is not a really light piece of metal, but I found I could manage it quite well by sitting on the ground at the back of the car and using my knees to support the tow bar which left my hands free to guide it into position and put the bolts into it. It really was a one-man operation, which quite surprised me. I had my wife standing by in case I needed some help. She's on the camera there. She was going to put the camera down and grab some bolts to put through if I needed help, but I managed it quite well. The next job we need to do is to take the existing brackets off the bumper bar. And the reason for doing this is we need to put some spaces in against them to move them out a little bit wider so that they can go and bolt back onto the new brackets that we're putting in to hold the tow bar. Hopefully you can see the little black spaces that I'm putting in here. They come with the tow bar kit, and of course, obviously the right size for the job. Next, I get under the car and do up all the bolts that hold the tow bar on. I don't do them up tight, I just do them up loose, because the tow bar still needs a little bit of movement at this stage, where it's still got to fit some things onto it, which may require some wriggling. Right at this point in time, my wife wasn't feeling too well, so she'd gone away to lay down and it was time to put the bumper bar on. So I had to do a little lateral thinking to work out how that was going to happen. And what I did was here, I put the two front bolts for the bumper partially in. That's the two bolts that it slots into. And then the other two bolts that go through the holes. These two go into the slot from the end of the bumper bar bracket. So I did them first with the intention of figuring out some way of sliding them in so that they could help hold the bumper bar in place while I tried to get another bolt into it. Now I put this bolt about halfway in so that there's plenty left hanging out for the bracket to slide over. 
the other thing to note is that I pulled the washer out to the head of the bolt so that the bracket could slide in under the washer and the washer would be on the outside of the bracket between the bracket and the head of the bolt. I did the exact same process on the other side, put the bolt halfway in and made sure that I pulled the washer out to the head of the bolt so that the bracket could slide under it. And because my wife wasn't feeling well, I'd lost my camera operator and I didn't have a tripod, so I had to do the next steps off camera. I'll try and explain how I went about it as best I can, hopefully you'll get the idea. The bumper bar is a fairly heavy item in itself, or at least it's very awkward given its weight and size. So in order to help me do that, I used the box that the tow bar came in, placed that behind the car, and sat the bumper bar on that for its weight while I maneuvered it onto the bolt. Now that made the whole operation fairly easy. The box itself is solid enough to support the bumper bar and it was pretty much the right height that it was easy for me to maneuver the slots and the bumper bar onto the bolt. From there I could just use that as a pivot to push the bumper bar up until I could get one of the bolts through the bolt hole. So the bottom line is, although I had my wife standing by to help me in case I needed it, this is really a one-man operation. One man should be able to take the bumper bar off, put the tow bar on, and put the bumper bar back on all by themselves. Okay, that's the bracket for the bumper bar. You can see I'm just moving that bumper bar. I've got this screw in to hold it, and this one just slid in very nicely. It was quite easy. I used the box that came in to balance it while I put it in. Yeah, it went in really easy. I had my wife to steady it so it didn't slip out while I got it secured. Uh, she didn't have any weight to lift, it was just a matter of holding it. Yeah, that went back on really nicely. And there should be a washer on both sides of these bolts that have nuts on them. I don't think I videoed putting them on before because I was just trying to get it attached. I had to go back and put them on, but just make sure you do put them on before you finish, and I'll need both ends now. Now this kit even comes with a brand new table, and for those of you that think that that statement's a bit strange, just let me point out that I haven't bought a tow bar kit for a long time. Every car I've bought happens to have come with a tow bar. But last time I bought a tow bar was when I was pretty young, and you had to buy the tow bar separately. As a matter of fact, you bought the tow bar, you had to buy the gooseneck as well, and then you bought the tow bar. So three purchases for what I've got in one kit here. Things are a bit better these days. You don't have to worry about what you haven't got. They put it all in one kit, all the bolts, washers, everything, just ready to go. Now you notice here I'm putting the tow ball on so that it rides fairly high. I'm putting it on what would normally be upside down on this type of gooseneck. And I did that because I was thinking I needed the trailer to be higher because on my last car it was just a shade low. I didn't stop to think about having a, a four-wheel drive this time and I certainly didn't stop to think that this four-wheel drive already has a lift kit in it. So later on I had to take the table off and turn it around the other side to effectively lower it about two or three inches. And right about this time the battery cut out in the camera so I had to stop and change that. I'm not sure whether it was having a break to change the battery in the camera or that I finally just realised how huge the car is that I'm sitting behind. But right about now I realised that I put the table on the wrong way and because of the size of the car I needed to reverse it. Pretty simple operation but I don't know why I didn't see that in the first place. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. That's got the tow bar on the car now. In the next episode, we'll do the electrics for it. In the meantime, if you'd like to see more of my videos, you can go to my YouTube channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe for more. Until next time.